Hey, brothers and sisters. So we're going to do the message today about the beast and the mark of the beast in Revelation 14. This message is so interesting. My brother, thank you very much. Fortaleza, Fortaleza, Rio, Copacabana, uh, uh, Sao Paulo. <laughs> So, uh, what is the beast, brothers and sisters? The, the Bible says, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, speaks a lot about the beast, with the beast. In the Word of God, we find that we find the, this beast has different names. Father God, I pray that we can understand your word and put it in practice. Please, Father God, I pray to understand this most important message in the, in the Word of God, Father God. I know some people in the group that don't understand this message. The beast we find in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, and there's uh, 10 signs that tell us who the beast is. The beast is also named the Antichrist. The beast is Daniel 7, the Antichrist, El Anticristo. And we have also uh, the men of sin and the men of perdition. So these are the names of this power. This power has been fighting against God. So it's going to be a long message. Maybe I could just do the beast and tomorrow do the mark of the beast. This power has been warring against God since the beginning of time. So it's not just the end times. We go back to the book of Genesis. There's a lot of wind here, but and sisters, I don't know if you can uh, listen. Since the book of Genesis, there was Nimrod. So you go back to the book of Genesis, it says, and Nimrod was a big fighter against God. He was a mighty man, mighty hunter, hunter against God. So this Nimrod was one of the first to fight against God. To fight against the kingdom of God, to fight against the, 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 the government of heaven. Then Cain, we go back to the book of Patriarchs and Prophets. Very interesting book. In fact, there's so many visions in this book. People, everybody here needs to read this book. Especially the first chapters, they're full visions of what happened in heaven before the, the fall. And she says that the descendants of Cain, Abel and Cain, there were two brothers. And Cain was the brother that killed, that killed the brother because uh, this guy was apathetic. This guy says I don't need anything. This guy was, was selfish. So God put a mark on his head. And then he says the descendants of Cain were the fighters against God. These are the ones that made the Torah Bible. Very interesting, but and sisters, the story. We go back to Cain. We go back to Adam and Eve. Then we go back to uh, uh, Abel and Cain. Abel and Cain. And then we have him. He was wandering around the earth like a fugitive, having a mark, but he had babies. He had, he had wife, he had babies, everything, and he became a big uh, nation. And the descendants of Cain, they're the ones that, that push people to rebel against God and to, to make the Tower of Babel. So this was the great man against God. If you need a good look at the, the, the beast of... Uh, in fact, I'm going to send a documentary. It's called 666 and the Mark. Everything we find in the beast, the papacy, or the, the, the Antichrist, we find it back to Nimrod, to Babylon, to the Hindu religion, to the Buddhist religion, to all the, the paganist, uh, the serpent, serpent religion, it's called the 666 religion, the serpent religion, which has been always fighting against the truth, fighting against God. And it's so interesting, brothers and sisters, to understand the Word of God, and understand all these truths, so we can exam uh, uh, God illuminates our minds. So we can know the truth, and the truth sets us free. It sets us free from the lies, from, from deceptions we have all over the place. So, uh, everything we find in the papacy today, in the Catholic Church, we find, back thousands of years ago, the thing, the pop, the, the thing that the Pope is wearing is from the Babylon priest. The, 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 the thing he has on his head is called the fish mitre, which is from the Babylon. The sign the Pope makes is called the 666 sign from the devil. Can you imagine that? You guys don't, can you imagine that? The name, Vicar, uh, you go to the uh, uh, Catholic churches and he says, Oret, Oret says, and there's three names, Oret says, says he's Satan. And he says, Oret says, and these are divinities, the trinity from Satan. And you find it inside the Catholic church, brothers and sisters. <laughs> and people don't know. They come in and they sing, they're worshiping God. And they don't know. It's a trinity from Satan. There's a, this is from the Jesuit, uh, the Jesuit organization. The Jesuit organization was founded by Ignatius Loyola. He comes from here, from the north of Spain. This man had visions. 
And you could write a book, it's very interesting, it's called The Exercises of Ignatius. The Exercises. So in this book he explains all the visions he had, which is basically satanic. Then what happened, he, uh, nobody wanted him here in Spain or in Jerusalem, so they went to France. And if you go to Paris, you have Montmartre. Montmartre is a very big, big, big church, and people don't know, it's made in the honor of the Society of Jesus. The Society of Jesus is the Jesuit organization. When the Protestant Reformation came around the 1600s, then the Pope used Ignatius Loyola and the Jesuit organization to fight against the Protestants. So all the Inquisition from 1600s all the way to uh, maybe a few hundred years after that, then it was used by the Jesuits and they're the ones that were leading all these things. So it's very interesting uh, uh, topic, one sister. This is a long message already, so I'm going to do part two tomorrow. And uh, we're going to find more about the mark of the beast, the end time, because the end of the world is coming. We need to know. Every Protestant also is fallen. You know, the Protestant churches, many of them, they're just following the beast. And they're doctrines from demons. We don't want doctrines from demons in the church, brothers. We don't want Sunday worship. Sunday is from Satan. The Sabbath is from God, the seven, Ten Commandments. We don't want people who believe that they, they, they go to hell or heaven when they die. He says that when Jesus comes, he resurrects the dead body and then people, they go either to heaven or hell. There's no eternal life right now. We're not eternal. Human beings are mortals. And the book of Thessalonians says only God is immortal. Only God has immortality. So when we die, we don't immortal. We die. We go to the grave. And when Jesus comes, then he brings people. He, 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 bring, he gives the rewards. Because the judgment has to be finished before the rewards are given. So if you have a judgment somewhere in a courthouse, then you cannot give rewards or punishment to someone unless it is finished. Jesus has not finished the judgment. He says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, he says, uh, we have such a high priest in the holy place in heaven, which is interceding for us. Very interesting, brothers and sisters, Jesus did not finish the work on the cross. Just on the cross, he says it is finished, but the first part was finished. The Jesus, when he went to heaven, he went on to work. It's been 2,000 years, and Jesus is still working for salvation, brothers and sisters. What is he doing? What, uh, this is a question, you know, when you ask almost any Protestant pastors, and you ask, what is Jesus doing in the most heavenly place, in the heavenly sanctuary? And 99% of Sunday pastors, they're going to say, I don't know, I don't know, because there's no lie, there's no lie. They've been uh, taken back, they're in Babylon, and they are fallen back in, the, in, in, in darkness. So Jesus now is removing the memory of sin from the heavenly sanctuary, and Jesus now is deciding who is going to make it to heaven, or who is going to burn, destroy in hell. Jesus is looking at every word you said. Jesus is looking at every act you did. Jesus is looking at every word, every act, every thought you had. And Jesus is even looking at the intention of every action you're doing. If you don't ask forgiveness for your sins, then you cannot go to heaven. You're going to have to be destroyed. So, brothers and sisters, this is a very good message. Tomorrow we're going to have part two, if God willing. God bless you.